Every year, as part of my year-end or Christmas time tradition, I like to spend an evening with the recent Nobel laureates, not literally of course, but virtually. And while the focus of this video will be purely their groundbreaking work and their scientific contributions to humanity, in my next video I will go over some fun facts about this year's laureates and share other interesting statistics about Nobel laureates in general. With the exception of just three years during the Second World War, at least one Nobel Prize has been awarded every year since the turn of the 20th century in 1901. In the areas of physics, chemistry, physiology or medicine, literature, peace and economic sciences. On December 10th, like clockwork every year, the Nobel Prizes are awarded to those who've conferred the greatest benefit to humanity. As she has for at least a decade, British television and radio journalist Zainab Badawi hosted Nobel Minds, a roundtable discussion with the Nobel laureates of 2022. In this video, I will introduce the laureates and summarize their work that led to their Nobel Prize in each of their respective areas of Starting in medicine or physiology, the Nobel Prize was awarded to Swedish geneticist Svante Pebo for his discoveries concerning the genomes of extinct hominins and human evolution. And here's a short video that summarizes his contribution. Svante Pebo made significant contributions to the field of human evolution through the analysis of ancient hominin genomes. By extracting and sequencing the DNA of extinct species, such as Neanderthals and Denisovan, Pebo has been able to demonstrate that modern humans, or Homo sapiens, coexisted and interbred with these ancient species in certain parts of the world. This revelation has allowed for a deeper understanding of the development and progression of diseases and infections in humans, as well as the physiological characteristics that contribute to our unique biology. It has shed light on the complex and fascinating process of human evolution, enriching our understanding of what it means to be human. Moving on to the next Nobel Prize, in chemistry, the recipients are two American scientists, Carolyn Bertozzi and Barry Sharpless, and a Danish scientist, Morten Meldal, for the development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. And here's a short clip that summarizes their contribution. Many pharmaceutical groups have been inspired by natural substances, and so the imitation of natural molecules that perform the same function is crucial to the industry. Barry Sharpless and Modern Maldel were recognized for discovering a new way of putting molecules together, called click chemistry. They established the foundations for a functional form of chemistry in which molecular building blocks snap together quickly and efficiently. It's now commonly used both within research and product development. Moving on to the Nobel Prize in Physics, here's a short clip that summarizes the contributions from the French, American, and Austrian scientists. This year's Physics Prize is awarded for discoveries in quantum mechanics, physics at the micro level, dealing with extremely small particles. The laureates Alan Ospe, Jean Clauze, and Anton Zeilinger have shown the potential to investigate and control particles that are in what's called entangled states. When two particles are entangled or linked at the quantum level, what happens to one of the pair has an instantaneous effect on the other, however far apart they may be. The fundamentals of quantum mechanics has a huge and profound impact on our world. Thank you for subscribing. The technology opens up the possibility of quantum computing, so huge amounts of data can be processed in a few minutes rather than the millions of years it would take a normal computer. Their experiments lay the foundation for new research in quantum information science, which can lead to new and unexpected ways of storing information and securing data, as well as developing drugs and vaccines faster. 
and for their Economic Sciences Prize, three American economists were the recipients of the prize this year for their work on banks and financial crises. And here's a short clip that captures their contributions. Banks can be inherently unstable and therefore need to be properly regulated in order to avoid financial crises and costly bailouts, like the 2008 financial crisis. This year's economics laureates Douglas Diamond and Philip DeVick have contributed to the world's improved understanding of how to prevent major financial crises and costly bailouts. They have developed theoretical models that explain the purpose of banks, why they can be susceptible to rumors of failure, and how regulation can help prevent financial instability. Ben Bernanke's research on the Great Depression has had an impact on how economic policy has been shaped in response to more recent financial crises. This year's economics laureates have also contributed to preventing the economic slowdown caused by COVID-19 from becoming a new Great Depression. The Nobel Prize in Literature was awarded to French writer Annie Ernaud for the courage and clinical acuity with which she uncovers the roots, estrangements and collective restraints of personal memory. According to Anders Olsen, the chair of the Nobel Committee for Literature, she has really renewed literature in many ways. Uh, on the one hand, I mean, she, she has a foot in, in, in the French tradition, the, the, the heritage of Marcel Proust, and this kind of search for the roots of her experience in childhood and so forth, uh, very important for her. But also, she guides this sort of uh, um, this, this search in a quite new direction and uh, in a more social uh, context and, uh, and that is so wonderful in her portraits of her parents for instance she gives us also back this heritage of these, very, these poor and ambitious people living in the country Last but not least, the Nobel Prize for Peace this year was awarded to an individual and two organizations focused on democracy and human rights Ales Bialyatsky from Belarus and the two organizations Memorial from Russia and the Center for Civil Liberties, Ukraine. For promoting the right to criticize power and protect the fundamental rights of citizens. For outstanding effort to document war crimes, human rights abuses and the abuse of power. And for demonstrating the significance of civil society for peace and democracy. Given the general context under which they won the Nobel Peace Prize, I suspect it was not the most cheerful of occasions, despite the grandiosity. And here's what the chair of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, Berit Rice Anderson, had to say in response to freelance journalist Ole Torp's question on the significance of this year's prize and the war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has been going on now for more than half a year. Do you think that this year's prize uh, has an impact uh, on the war and the peace effort? Uh, I do not believe that this prize has an immediate impact on the development of the war. But what I deeply believe in and what the committee deeply believes in is that the kind of work that these um, Peace Prize laureates represent in the long run will make a difference and will have an impact on the future development because this is what people want safe societies where people have a say and where they are not victims of atrocities and uh, war. If you got value from this video Please like and subscribe and comment below if you found anything of particular interest. I'd love to hear from you from whichever corner of the planet you're from. Thanks for watching and until we meet again, be safe and be well.